Somebody tell me now who thought it would be a good idea to pick up my face. Like literally right before filming. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I get a lot of comments about contouring, highlighting, and just focusing on the base. So I did do my eyes, my brows, so you can just really focus on the clean base. I used only the Laverna palette. So today's video is going to be about color correcting, how to get a nice, smooth, full coverage base, and of course, highlighting and contouring. So if you guys want to see how I like to color correct, how to get a smooth base, what I do to highlight and contour, just all in depth, then keep on watching. So since I've done all of my eyes off camera, I'll quickly let you guys know what I used. So for the eyeshadow, I used my Laverna palette. For eyeliner, I used the Benefit Roller Liner just in brown. Lashes, I don't have any strip lashes on. These are just my extensions. And for my brows, I'm actually using the LA Girl Brow Pomade in warm brown, which is a really pretty warm brown so i have been using this over brow pencils lately i feel like i can get a little bit more of a natural bushy look but what i do is i use that and i go in with the 24 hour brow setter just to kind of separate them a little bit so that's everything to do with the eyes if you guys want to see a separate video i can totally film a tutorial on the eyes maybe on instagram now i'm going to get straight into what you're here for and that is the base so i always start off by hydrating and moisturizing my base even if you are someone with oily skin, it's super important to hydrate your skin just to make sure the makeup looks nice and smooth. I find if you don't do that, your makeup can start to get really textured. And even if you do have super, super oily skin, once the powders and everything go on, it will come up looking crusty and dry. So I like to go in with a little bit of eye cream and moisturizer. So I have been using the Ole Henderson eye cream for so, so long. This is my favorite eye cream for before makeup. I jump back and forth between moisturizers, but at the moment I am using the Wishful Honey Balm Jelly Moisturizer. This is from Huda Beauty. This is her skincare brand, and I really, really like it. It has a really nice... So I'm first going to go in with the Wishful Honey Balm and I'm just going to apply this all over my face. And I like to add a little bit just on my neck as well because your neck needs to be hydrated as well. My face at the moment is a little bit sore because if you guys follow me on Instagram, I feel like every time I'm doing a video I always refer back to Instagram so that's why it's so important. You guys should follow me there as well because I honestly update so much more on Instagram than I do here just because it's easier to jump on my stories. But the other day, I got my lips touched up a little bit and I tried PDO threads. You guys might see, yeah, you can see a little bit of bruising here. So I got like a, kind of like a brow lift. Not so much a lift, but more of a pull to lift my eyes out and just to make my brows a little more straight. And I got one thread each here just to pull out a little fold under my lips. So the reason why I like this moisturizer, it's a really pretty luminous moisturizer. And then I don't ever apply that under my eyes because they're not formulated. I'm sure most of you know this, but if you don't, there is a reason why there's eye cream and then face cream is because under your eyes is a more sensitive type of skin and you need a eye cream that is specifically formulated for the under eyes only. So for eye cream, I'm gonna go in with the Ole Henderson Banana Bright. The funny thing is, is that I have had this eye cream for so long and I've still got so much in there. It is a pretty thick eye cream, so a little bit goes a really long way. Whereas with my Lemur eye cream, I've only had it for a few months and I feel like it's almost already finished. So that's something to think about when you're buying expensive skincare so I'm just gonna rub that in you always want to use this finger because it has the least pressure you want to make sure you're not only focusing the eye cream here but all the way out here because this is actually where your fine lines tend to settle so what the eye cream is going to do is make sure that your concealer is hydrated and it will help your under eyes by the bags not peeking through. So the next step is probably the most life-changing step I've ever used in my makeup routine. Some people might think it's pointless, but for me, I think a color corrector is so, so important. Now, you have to be careful about what color corrector you use because in the past, I've tried a few like, I don't wanna say gimmicky because different things work for different people and that's what you have to understand when you're watching people talk about makeup online is that everyone's going to have a different opinion. But for me, 
I don't like the super dark orange correctors because I feel like you're then doing more work to cover that and then you're adding more concealer and it kind of defeats the purpose. But for me, I have just found to be useful the Bobbi Brown color corrector and this one is in light to medium peach. This is what it looks like. So I will just go in with my finger. I never really go in with a brush or anything. And you guys will see the difference. So I dip my finger in probably like twice. Not that it matters. And then the key is to kind of just let it dry down a bit. So it really acts as a barrier between your under eye and your makeup. Even when I'm doing a natural look. Like if you guys watched my previous video. My just day to day makeup look. I do the same thing. Whether I'm doing a natural look or a full coverage. I do think this is necessary. Obviously only if you have dark circles. If you don't have dark circles, you don't need to do it. So for foundation, I have tried so many foundations in my time, but there's only really been two foundations that I feel like always work for me, and that is the NARS She Glow, and the shade that I use is Barcelona, and then the Too Faced Born This Way in Warm Beige. So I'm just pumping a little bit on my mirror stand, and I really love this sponge. Surprisingly, a lot of people have never heard of the Juno & Co sponge. This I heard of from Nikki Tutorials and she used to rave on about it. This sponge is washed. It just leaves a bit of like residue because I don't like deep clean and I just wash it with shampoo. So I mean soap, not shampoo. Okay, so I don't know if this shade matches me right now. I don't know if you guys can see but like obviously you can see a little bit of skin through but I just feel all around this foundation just looks so, so good on the skin. So because I've done my eyes first, I'm just going in with a smaller, kind of like a fluffy, dense brush. And instead of going in with the beauty blender around my eyes, I'm just adding foundation here, just very gradually. Okay, so something really important that you guys should know is that the contouring and highlighting that I do on Instagram, and not only me, but 99% of beauty bloggers, what you see on an Instagram video and what is kind of like appropriate for day-to-day -day life are two completely different things. Don't get me wrong, in the end, Instagram contouring works. If you blend it out right, it'll come out looking the same as just normal contouring and highlighting. But I want to show you the way that you can get the best outcome with the least work because all those dramatic lines on your face are 10 times harder to blend and especially if you're a beginner, whether you're a beginner or you're super elite at makeup, I feel like nobody wants to spend 10 hours blending their makeup. Okay, so when it comes to concealers, in my opinion, I feel like there are only two brands which you will never really hear a bad thing about them and they are the Tarte Shape Tape and the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. For as long as I have been doing makeup, both on myself and clients, these are the two concealers that I just feel like I always go back to, I always repurchase. This is the shade light medium and I'm just going to pop this under my eyes. And I always like to bring it a little bit like up here just to slim my nose down a bit. Chin and just like that. So when I do my foundation, I use this end, and then when I do my concealer, I like to use the pointy side. So once you let your concealer set for a bit, it will thicken up. So you can go in straight away, but I feel like to get the most full coverage results, to just let it sit for a minute. I feel like it is a bit of struggle finding your perfect concealer shade, but for me, I think I used to use concealers that were too light and I looked too white under the eyes whereas this shade I find is still a bit lighter but it has like a peachy undertone so it gives me a lift without looking grey and stark and you guys can probably tell that my under eye looks completely different to how it looked naturally because I've lifted, I've brightened, I haven't tried too hard. A mistake that I used to make was that I tried so hard to get my under eye to look bright that I literally made it look white and it kind of had like the adverse effect and then I just like to bring it all the way up on the inner corner my favorite part of the base is definitely cream contouring and you guys should already know my favorite product is the Huda Beauty in light there is quite a few shades I've tried a few different ones but I find 
light gives me the nicest natural finish so the brush that i'm using is the huda beauty face sculpt and shade brush this is actually the brush that was made for this so i'm just going in with the small sides so when you're contouring you don't have to go in and draw all the lines at once so if you're someone that doesn't cream contour often or this is all new to you you can work bit by bit so you can just start with the cheekbones blend it out get happy with how it looks and then move around your face so i'm just going to start on the cheeks and you want to apply the contour Kind of like above your cheekbone so you don't want to go too low and you don't want to go too high you would rather place it higher than lower so you're giving your cheekbones a more lifted elevated look so same thing on this side and you can just follow your natural contours so you really don't have to do any fancy design just a straight line and you're good to go i'm using the sigma domed brother and just working that around so i kind of like to dab and then swell is that what's called so doing your contour like this you're not rushing to quickly get over to another spot you can just really focus on blending each area at a time kind of like that so contouring the jaw you want to just literally follow your natural jawline so with contouring i feel like the way to make it look the best is to not try too hard to completely change your face shape but just go in and follow your natural contours and kind of just enhance what you've already got and I feel like that's how you will look the best and you kind of want to keep it in the same place like again a mistake I used to make was over blending and then I just look like I had a shadow under my jaw and it looked more like a beard than a contour so you just want to keep it all in the one place and always double check so either put your neck back or turn your head right to the side to see what you're working with okay so when it comes to nose contouring my favorite brush is the F 05A from Anne Hazarati. It's just a really nice shape for nose contouring. The whole time I have been using the Huda Beauty Tantor in light. So you don't want to bring your contour too close together, but you don't want it to be too far apart either. So everyone kind of just look at your own nose and figure out what you're trying to correct. Obviously the goal is to make my nose look slimmer, but more or less the goal is honestly to make both sides look even and I like to add the cream on the tip to make it look shorter to blend it out today I'm using the BH Cosmetics 141 brush it's just like a fluffy domed brush okay so I'm just gonna slowly blend it so the key is also you don't want to like over blend like you want it to look blended but you don't want to over blend to the point you've just got a big brown shadowy mess on your nose so the last place that i do like to contour is my forehead so instead of drawing on my contour like everywhere else what i like to do is go in with a smaller domed brush and just manually kind of like shadow in what i like to look smaller okay so to do that i love this little brush from jacqueline hill and morphe it's the jh08 brush and then what i'm doing is i'm just going in with a little bit of the product i'm gonna just Take these off for ow! I just ripped my hair. Take those off for a moment, and then I'm just manually gonna go in and work this into my forehead, and that way I'm in more control. And then I'm just blending it all in with my sponge. Another thing that's super important with contouring is getting the excess product which would be the excess concealer and dragging it under your contour to make it look super neat and chiseled okay so when setting your makeup i believe it's super important to first go in with a brightening powder not only to just brighten up your under eyes a little bit but it acts as a barrier between your makeup and the powder and i know the whole purpose of the powder is to set your makeup but I really like the powders in here. So there's two shades. There's Halo, which is a little more pinky. And then Enhance, which is a little more banana. I honestly like to just swivel in both and use them. Like, I feel like they both suit my under eyes. I love this Anne Hazarati brush in F06. So I just kind of tap into both. And you want to buff out any under eye creases first. 
So what I also like to do is because if you add loose powder too high up, it'll just go all over your lash band. So I'm using this to brighten up the inside of my nose because that is what tends to um, get really dark on me and just ruin my makeup. So I'm just going to go in with that powder there. I'm going to blend it all in. And then I'm just going to preset under my eyes and watch how much it brightens and lifts. Like, look at that. You could honestly go in and just set your face like this on an everyday look, but if you want your makeup to last all day, I would definitely recommend going over top with a baking powder. And I'm just going to go in and blend over my inner corner because it does mess up the shadow a little bit. I don't know what gross thing has happened to this powder. It was like stuck to my desk. It might be... I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm using the Huda Beauty powder in the shade Cupcake. This is my favorite shade out of the Huda Beauty powders. I'm also a big fan of the Laura Mercier. Everybody knows that. But for a nice, bright, nice, smooth under eye, I do really like this. It's a little more of a pink undertone. So I'm just going honestly straight over what I did. And because we did that powder, you don't really need to drag it too far out. So I'm just focusing on the areas that tend to naturally create lines. Definitely want to chisel your contour like that. And nothing new with my powder. If you've been here, you know I love the Charlotte Tilbury Micro Powder. This one's in shade 2. Such a good powder. So I'm just going to go in with the same brush. I'm just packing that all over the rest of my face. Once you've added um, setting spray, you will not get a smoother complexion using this powder like everything just blends together so nicely one thing i will say is that they definitely need to come out with more shades i think three shades is definitely not enough like there's way too many skin tones and skin types to only be having three shades so because of that powder we added before and everything just looks super smooth now a new thing that i've recently and i mean really recently learned is instead of just going straight in and setting with a powder bronzer, what I will actually do is go in with my blush, my highlight, my under eyes, my lips. Obviously looking at my face because it's incomplete, it looks like it needs something. What it doesn't need is even more shadows and contouring before you've added color and lifting and you know definition on the lips. So what I want to do first is go in with my blush, highlight, contour the rest of my eyes, add the lips, Walk into another room to see natural lighting. Nine times out of ten, you might not even need more bronzer. And this is why I wanted to sit here and kind of film an updated like base video because every time I learn something new, something that I didn't know last time I filmed, I definitely want to get on here and share it with you guys. So for blush, I'm going to go in with the Tarte Pro Glow. There's a really pretty shade. So this shade here is the one that I like. It reminds me a lot of Orgasm by Nash. So I'm going to go in with this one here using the Morphe Jaclyn JH06. So what I'm going to do is start on the apples and kind of like contour with it. So don't be afraid to mix your blush in with your contour. And what I mean is like, so not actually contour like in your hollows as you would bronzer, but just blending it in because everything will kind of just look like one. So I just like to go all along my cheeks and even a little bit on my nose and forehead if I'm feeling super cute for the day. <laughs> for my highlight, I'm using the Anastasia and Emreezy highlight. If anyone knows a dupe for this highlight, let me know because it's my favorite and if there isn't one, I'm gonna have to create one. Like, I'm not even joking because I love how wet and buttery it is. So I'm adding it on my nose. I just love how it's not like overly glittery like it doesn't leave a thick chunky glitter you guys can probably see i used a shimmer blush so i'm just gonna add a little bit on the high points i might as well just do my under eye on camera so i'm not gonna lift up my palette because my laverna that i have here one of the shades is completely broken so i gotta bring in a new one but i'm just gonna go in with the shade macchiato 
one swipe guys that is literally one swipe under the eyes and look how much pigment it has if you do your makeup right you don't need a setting spray i'm going to be completely honest so the reason why we use setting spray is to one make it last so because of the way we've done the makeup it will last another reason why i personally love setting spray especially like a moisturizing one or something like this is because it adds hydration back to your face so for me personally when i finish my makeup and i look at it and i don't think i need to drown my face in setting spray that's a huge flex for me because i use a setting spray as like an eraser to get rid of all the crappy mistakes i've made don't get me wrong i still am going to add a little bit but i don't need it so i'm going to go in with my Too Faced better than sex I'm also going to do lips on camera and I'm going to put you on to a hack that I've been doing just like the past few weeks since it's been getting warmer here in Sydney. This hack is going to change your life. So if you're someone that has my liquid lipsticks and you have those days where you don't feel like a fully matte lip, I got you. I'm going to go in first with Hover by MAC and line my lips. So I have more of like a soft dainty pink, but I am going in with cork to define. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the lips is I'm actually going to take my favorite shades. I just dropped my lipstick right in the tan tool. That is fantastic. So if you don't want a completely matte lip, what I have been doing is adding my liquid lipsticks in with a little bit of Vaseline. I don't have Vaseline, so I've just picked up any lip balm out of my drawer. So this is the Pharmacy, um, it smells so good, Citrus Lemongrass Lip Balm. I've got a little palette here. So what I'm going to do is go in with a tiny bit of lip balm. So there we have my lip balm. So just to spice it up, I'm going to add a little bit of Love Mood, which is a much more deeper like rosy nude it's not super nude a little bit of that and then angel baby which is a really really soft dusty baby pink I'm gonna swish everything together and then we're gonna make one nice nude creamy delicious lipstick okay so I'm just gonna add it on with a brush And done. so when i do this with vaseline it looks literally like a cream lipstick like i'm talking the mac luster lipstick like a really creamy lipstick or like the dior lipsticks where they're not matte but i feel like this lip balm is definitely not as hydrating as just normal vaseline because it still does look matte i'm just going to go over top with a little bit of gloss not too much I just went in with my gloss in Diamond Sugar. That is pretty much it. Let's get these clips out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All of the products will be listed down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.